Welcome to part two, drawing clothes from scratch. This is week two, and again, I am mentor Val. Clothes are obviously a huge part of cosplay, so we at least want to capture the essence of what the character wears. It by no means needs to be perfectly exact, but as long as the details are there and you put in some effort, I think it'll show. To successfully draw clothes from scratch, you need to first have these items. Number one would be your outline. This is just a simple draft of where the colors are going to go. And then secondly, your base colors. So once the shapes and basic lines are done, you need to fill in the space with a dark color, preferably, or just a prominent color on the piece of clothing. Thirdly, you need details. So details include shading and highlights, but also ornate elements that you would typically skip in your base color step, such as lace, embroidery, or some kind of graphic design. I'm gonna go ahead and add sections on makeup too, because that's obviously a very important part of cosplay as well. Obviously though, clothes will be the main focus. I will add the makeup bits in the end. Starting with the hard stuff first, such as hair and clothes in my opinion, will give you more practice over the weeks, especially in our third week, when we're bringing all of it together with drawing facial features and body parts. Additionally, we'll cover custom poses, so it's a true incorporation of everything. First, what I'm doing is I'm creating a crown. And for these kind of hard metallic objects for clothes, I tend to use dip pen hard or dip pen soft. Very easy pens to use, in my opinion. And I also use the pen fade option or the force fade on these dip pens because they snap them nicely in place. It just generally saves time because they don't have to go back on them to redo their shape later. Now I'm drawing spike studs on her crown. This is quite an easy step. I don't know why it took so long, but um, I just used the bucket tool once I was done with the outline and I just filled it in with the same color. When drawing items of clothing that are protruding outwards, such as this collar, you have to make sure that the angle is correct. And you can use the undo button as many times as you want to get it right. Some people like to draw items of clothing using a contrasting color, such as red, green, or bright blue. I personally don't do that because it helps me get in the zone of how the edit will ultimately look like. But this is again all personal preference, and if you think that it'll help you draw better, then by all means go for it. Here I'm drawing what we call scalloped edges, and you see this a lot in several clothing types, so I think just knowing how to draw a simple little semicircle can go a long way. When outlining, you want to be aware of where your clothing ends. Where do these edges go? And how will you use the outline to create an effect of light and dark that you want? For example, I'm not drawing the slit in the middle of the feathers, like in the reference, because I know that I can just add that on later with shading. In the shading stage, my aim will be to make the feathers look softer, so I don't think adding a hard line in the middle during the outline phase would be correct. Now I'm using a drawing tool in the shape of an oval to create the jewel. Also, I'm using perspective form to change it so the angle is a little bit facing away. Then here I am just drawing more feathers and also drawing the basic outline of her dress. This is useful because I'm going to be using the bucket tool later in a layer underneath. After the outline of the shapes of the clothes is done, I then move on to my base color. The base color has to be a layer underneath the outline. I just take a color that is prominent on the character's clothes, and I use quite a wide brush for this. It doesn't have to be a particular brush, but I'm using my shading brush because it's quite versatile and it spreads the color out nicely. I make sure to color it underneath the outline layer because I don't want to color out the lines, so I'm using my outline layer as a guide. Since that side of her collar is already dark, I just use the prominent dark color there to indicate that it's a darker place. Then I move on to adding shading to her collar. The shading is done by just looking at where the light would shine, so I used quite a light color actually when I did the base color. But that's okay, because I can just go in with some shading to indicate that the light color is indeed where the light is shining from. Alternatively, I think an easier way was just to create a base color that was somewhat dark, and then clip a layer, the lighting layer, and then add some light highlights. But, oh well, it turned out the same, and I think you get the same effect, really. Now I'm just erasing 
my outline on her collar part with the shadow because I don't need that edge anymore and it would be too light so I think it would kind of ruin the edit if I kept it there. Now I'm just adding more shading to the feathers. In this method of shading that I chose to do, as in I put the light color down first and the shading after, this way I think just helps me get more control over how much shading I want because I mean her piece on her collar is quite metallic looking anyways so I think it would just be shiny so that's just my interpretation. Then still on my base color layer I continue with coloring in the rest of her shirt. As you can see it's like this dark grape color and I tend to use a bucket tool but I fill in the gaps later. I also darkened her shirt a little bit so that I could make my highlights stand out more later. Now I'm moving on to her purple skirt. Her skirt is separated by several different shades of purple, I think about three. So for this one, for this second layer, it's a lighter purple. I just didn't really draw anything on the outline because it was it was a simple shape to color in and create on my base color layer. Simple enough to the point where I didn't really need to make an outline or a guide for any of the drawing process here. Instead, I've just personally decided to add the outline later on after I'm done coloring in the very basic shape of this. What I did next was go back to my shading layer, which was layer number two, and then I just fixed some skin glitches. However, if you are new to this and not going with the flow just like me because I'm comfortable with starting and ending wherever, then you should just follow a layer procedure and I will lay this out. The layer procedure will entail drawing hair and clothes and what layers and when to do it. Afterwards, I drew the last layer of her skirt. Then I went back to my outline layer and created an outline for the second layer of her dress. Next, I'm just using the lower layer of her dress, that color, and I'm coloring in the empty spaces. I also make sure that it's under the outline layer so that it doesn't affect the lines that I just drew. And then I'm drawing and duplicating layers for her lace. And then I'm gonna combine them so that it'll be easier to copy and paste. So this goes on for quite a while actually. So I'm not gonna include the whole thing, but you get the idea. It's just me using a shape tool um, and I drew a hexagon shape. I used perspective form to stretch the shape out. And then I just copied and copied and copied and erased where unnecessary. So what I did was I duplicated the layer and then I merged it down and then I duplicated that layer and I merged it down. And then I just, uh, I came up with a cluster of these shapes that I did like and I just kept on copying that so that it saved time. Clothing details are meant to be the last layer of your clothes. Therefore, uh, I was just making sure that everything was gonna end up on this layer just by again, duplicating the layer and then merging it down and then repeating the process. As you can see, I'm adding more outlines to the third layer of her skirt, and this is important later because I'm just using them as a guide for shading. Now I'm just going back on my hair layer to fix up her hairline. It was always bothering me a bit. I fixed up some little hair strands, and I did that by using my oil hairbrush. Then I shaded, I got the layer underneath, and I shaded underneath the hair so that it looked like there was a shadow cast by her hair on her forehead. And then I did my normal a chin shadow technique with a little triangle using my shading brush. When I do neck shading, I don't like to make the triangle bit too dark. Instead, I like to darken a small, thin, fine line directly underneath the chin. So that's just what I'm doing here. I, I tried to lower the opacity or the darkness of this chin shading triangle. And instead, I put that darkness in that little fine line. I also proceeded to do her eyes. So how I do eyes is I erase the Zepetto avatar layer's eyes, and then I create two layers underneath. I make a white sclera, just plain white. I think sometimes I, I like to do it a little bit gray, grayish, but here I'm just doing white. And then I used the same shading brush to create an iris. So you don't want to make it too hard. You want to make it a soft shape. That's why I'm using a shading brush. The iris layer is layered above the white sclera, and underneath the Zepetto avatar layer. For my eyes, I go back to create more highlights, just like I did with the lips. And you can see that it's not perfect, but um, you won't really see it since uh, the character's eyes are so small in that distance. 
to create the pupil, I use a soft brush, like a shading brush, and then I just go ahead on that same iris layer, and then I just color in a circle, a black circle. I'm also creating eyeshadow. You don't need to create this with an ad brush yet, but after the base layer is down for the eyeshadow, I um, get my glitter brush and just add some glitter to it in ad mode. For my eyes, I also like to draw this white dot, and this one can be used with a dip pen or some kind of hard brush. This hard iris dot is in add mode, so on that same layer, I'm also drawing some iris details. You can do this with any pen, just as long as it's a very thin brush size. I'm also drawing her eyelashes. I use an eyelash brush for that. You can achieve a realistic eyelash effect by keeping the brush size quite small. You can see that I barely made mine two pixels. And then, in terms of how I actually use this brush, I don't even use a force fade on this thing. I just do outward strokes repetitively close to each other. I draw more concentrated and heavy strokes on the outer end of her eye. So when I move more inside, like closer to her nose, etc., the strokes become smaller and thinner and also more spaced out. I also don't like to draw them in the opposite direction. If anything, I just draw them straight. I also drew a little bit of eyeliner underneath. I did this simply by tracing the bottom of her eye, or the waterline, as makeup artists like to call it. Once the waterline is done, it has successfully marked the place where I will draw my bottom lashes. The lashes on the bottom are a bit more spread out than the top lashes, and they're more sparse. There is definitely no need for you to add bottom lashes at all, but since I just like this kind of detail, that's what I do. Since this character isn't facing perfectly front, I just draw eyelashes slightly differently on her right side. I do this by drawing the outer lashes way more long and concentrated. Meanwhile, the inner lashes are smaller and less detailed than the other side's inner lashes. I also like to add this eye shading to make the eye have more depth and look more three-dimensional. So what I do is I create a layer above the iris. I just use a shading brush in a grayish color, and then I erase accordingly around the iris area, but the main purpose is to make the whites look not so white. After that, I'm kind of drawing some dark shadows under her eyes to make her look more, well, gothic, I suppose. I'm also correcting her lip color, and how I draw lips is I just get the darkest shade and color in. It doesn't look too good. After that, I need to fix the coloration on the lips. It's a bit too dark. I create a layer that is clipped to the lips, and then I use a brush in add mode to highlight the lips. I go in with an even darker color for the lip line to show that she's smiling a bit. Before I go on to shading and lighting for the whole character, I have to take a look at my layers, specifically my folders. Since everything is complete and I don't want to change anything too major, that's when I know I can sort them into folders. Folders, I just keep them quite simple. I relegate my drawing to two or three folders, such as a folder dedicated to clothes, hair, and sometimes even my Zepetto avatar. But I'm quite free with this. Um, in this case, I made a folder for her hair and for her clothes specifically. When you want to apply shading and lighting to a whole bunch of layers, that's when you have to make a folder. So I'm making a folder for clothes and hair because I want to apply specific shading and lighting to each. If you want to make folders for the sake of organizing, that's fine, but make sure that all of your layers within the folder do not have folders inside. Never make folders inside folders inside folders inside folders. So for my clothes folder, only the outline, the base color, and the details will be inside. That's all you need. So. Once you group them together, that's when you can highlight and add your shading. Thanks to the folders of my completed layers, lighting and shading becomes much easier. So my outline layer will equally be as highlighted as my base color layer. Because of these folders, I can now comfortably shade and highlight where I want to without worrying about going out of the lines. This is because, again, I clipped these layers, shading and highlight layers, to my folders. Remember, the highlights must be done in add mode, and shading can be done in normal mode, just as long as the shading is never done with a hard black color. You can see me here using add mode to add some details on her shirt and also her necklace, her oval jewel. I also use a glitter brush for this because I want to make the highlighting look more diverse and varied, not just using a shading brush in add mode because I think that can get quite boring. But then I'm also shading the outer edge to imitate backlighting on her dress, adding some shading 
in the dark parts of her skirt, since, of course, the parts not exposed cast a shadow. Her skirt is also made up of waves or curves, whichever you'd like to call them. I'm also shading the two sides of each curve or wave, and I'm also going to be highlighting the center of each wave later on. It's important to use a soft airbrush for the shading in this case, of course not in a black color as always, and I'm just going to be shading underneath the layer, directly underneath the layer, because that also casts a small shadow. Moving on to her belt, finally. I don't really draw an outline layer specifically for this, I just layer it on top of basically everything because it's the final thing with detail that I'm going to add. So I just draw the basic color with the basic shape, and then I add some chains. This is how I draw my chains, very low effort in this time because it's quite far away. And then I draw a little heart at the end. Finally, I make some details on the belt. Then I top it all off with some lighting and done. It creates a metallic finish. I didn't record this, but here is how the highlights on the top of the waves look like. For anyone that's still confused, here is a summary of how my layers look like. You can do these in absolutely any step you want, but just make sure that the numbers roughly match up. It's also important to know that you have to draw your clothes outline first, but it will be above the base colors. Also, important to note, is that once you're finally done with your clothes and hair, you put them into separate folders. You can see here which layers you put in the hair folder and which other layers you put in the clothes folder. Then you clip any remaining shading and highlight layers to these folders to affect all layers at once in a group. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in week three where we'll be drawing body parts such as hands, eyes, and everything in more detail.